I heard about that. Oh, shit. Yeah, the emergency act, that little fruit loop. Um, how are you guys? How are you guys? How are you guys? I can't see you yet. Okay, look, Mew Mew's sitting back here. There she is. She's ready for the live stream, you all. I can't get it right. I can't see any of you here. She's ready. She's like there. All right. Yes, I heard about it. Um, you made it in time. I just got back in. You know me. I'm always running out to eat, scarfing my food down. Um, it's cold in Canyon Country. Yes, Alice, I was up there this morning. I took the pictures right by you. I was up there. Um, Victoria, BC, 222 tomorrow. Hey, Bella, totally. I totally get it. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. Oh my God. Here I am. I know I scarfed my dinner down. So yeah, now I'm drinking hot water because like nobody should eat like that. Um, <laughs> oh, Bethany. Thanks you guys. I know two, two, 22, 2022, two, two, two. Yes. It's the United States. It's literally, I know the fucking, I ate cauliflower pasta. Bravo. I ate my, um, okay, this sounds weird, but I get orange chicken and it's called chicken lemon. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to have the Don Lemon chicken. <laughs> the waitress thinks I'm insane. Um, it's the Don Lemon. Oh, there you are. Michael, I posted your thing. Fucking what is that about, right? What the hell is that about? I know I posted my, I can't, I'm on my phone here. My other phone doesn't have it. But anyway, literally, literally, Epstein goes scot free. I mean, I'm sorry. He hung himself in jail, i.e. was murdered. Literally was murdered. And John, John Luke Burnell, same thing. No cameras in these jails. You and I, I can't cross the street without a mask on. I know it's dark. <laughs> Don Lemon chicken. I always have to make a crack about CNN and Don Lemon. I'm like, I call it lemon chicken. And she goes, you mean whatever lemon? And I go, no, that's Don Lemon. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, anyway, stupidity. But literally, who are they punishing? Peaceful protesters in Canada. But you know what's so interesting? I literally could have told you this as a kid. I grew up on the East Coast of Canada and I wanted to get the hell out of there because I thought it was communist. And it's not the same as BC. Um, my thoughts on the convoy are they should, you know what the truckers should do? Fucking the, I'm Canadian by nature, but you know, I split on Canada. So, and I literally took off because I thought it was communist. It was too communist for me. Now America's getting that way. So I got nowhere to go. I have to go south of the border and keep going. Um, mm. Yes, but you know what? Here's, uh, let me see lives. Yeah, I know. Okay, so literally what I think of the convoy is I look extra pretty. Oh, look, I look very pretty. Thank you. Um, I put on, I'm totally switching subjects because you know, I'm a hyper bitch, but anyway, Kenna found me this in uh, May. She did my, look at my glitter. This is all Kenna's. Kenna's do. Kenna picked for me all of this. So like if you go out to Northridge, Alta, Kenna's in there, ask for McKenna because she'll help you anyway. And she works at Mac. So, you know, this is called whatever it's called, but it is um, Powder Kiss Liquid. Look, it's literally, look, this is like mauve. Look, it's so cute. It's like Powder Kiss. There. How cute, right? Anyway, Kenna picked this for me. And then this is, uh, and she picked a lot of other stuff too, under my eyes, you know, for, yeah, it's mauve, right? Isn't that great? That's Mac. Because they were giving out a gift. So I went in to see my little Kenna. And um, then I made her work hard because I'm like, I want to look cute. So that's what I said. Anyway, <laughs> so she was helping me. And then I bought, I never wear false eyelashes. Powder Kiss, that's it exactly. I never wear false eyelashes and I'm, I don't have them on now. But anyway, we bought some and she bought them with the glue liner. So I just put the black liner on like glue and then put the lashes. And then she says to me, Little McKenna, she says, why are you wearing the lashes? <laughs> I'm like, no reason. I'm just getting them in case I want to wear. I said for my people here, it was really funny the way she said it. Um, oh, you had red pepper and salmon. I wish I'd have done that. Look, and then I wear this gloss over. See? All right, isn't it cute? Mm, mm, there. That's from Little McKenna. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> so she's been dressing me with makeup in the back. So I got a shit ton from her. Thank God. Um, aw, thank you for that. Yeah, little McKenna, she helps me. So I, not the magnetic lashes. We weren't sure what was in those. And little McKenna wears, she wears like the mink lashes, but there's like a lip, li not a lip liner, eyeliner, and it's glue. So you can draw your line, like you can draw it and then stick your lashes on. So... I love this. I know. And she did the glitter. This is MAC too. This is their MAC shadow. She did the, I had broccoli for dinner too. So she did the glitter for me because she had her cute little glitter on. So lip gloss is my life too. Anyway, it's called Powder Kiss and this one is called, and I can't even read it. It's Feroshi or something. Anyway, it's this, it's mauve. And then this one is not any easier to read. I don't know. This is Oyster Girl. Oyster Girl? I think this is Oyster Girl, and I bought two of these, too. So, there. See? Okay, so anyway, that's the lip gloss story. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so anyway, going on in Canada, honestly, what he's doing is completely illegal, but they don't have the same constitutional laws we have here. They don't even have, I know, Don Lemon chicken. <laughs> I can't. I'm stabbing it with a fork like this. Fuck CNN. Um, anyway, um, the, I know, the Paige picked out these glasses for me at baby Audrey's party. So these are 1970s glasses picked out by Paige because Paige dresses me on the other side of town and kind of helps me in the makeup. So without these two girls, I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. Okay, so anyway, What's going on in Canada, you guys, you have to look up David Icke and you have to look up Agenda 2030, okay? Agenda 2030, because that is what's happening. It is Agenda 2030. So, you know, David Icke was kicked off of everything online. And that's, yeah, no, I know, David Icke, fabulous, been saying it since the 80s, kicked off of everything, kicked off for speaking the truth. Yet Prince Andrew and his 72 teddy bears, loser, that has to do with King Solomon and the demons that he called in, 72 of them. That's actually what that has to do with it. It's an occult thing and they're representative. So what they do with that, those are called keepers of souls, in case you don't know. Those are keepers of souls. So what he's done is he's manifested entities into his teddy bears and that's why they're taking care of them like that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but in the occult world, that's what they do. Okay, that's actually what they do. They manifest energy and pull it into an inanimate object, teddy bear, vase it's like spirit cooking so it's that's what he has 72 teddy bears it was it 72 um keepers of souls that's what he's doing he's keeping the energy like that's exactly what he's doing prince andrew ugly fucking prince andrew now the queen lizard lizzie she has um she has uh <laughs> no it's true that's what they do people don't believe it people don't believe it and before i get going when you check my cal, he's a weirdo, but they're occultists, okay? So they're Luciferian and they're in the blood cult. So they keep souls in, it. that's what spirit cooking is. They conjure up demonic energy. He's probably had them, or Chucky, exactly. He's probably had them in his room since he was little and they've been conjuring them up. They do rituals all year round. Lizard, Queen Lizard, you know, like I, I literally... John's like, every time I talk to him, he's like, well, you know, in Canada, because we're both Canadian. And I'm like, I am not singing God save the fucking queen. I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not doing it. That's not where I'm here to, I don't want to give her my prayers. I don't like the woman. Okay. So anyhow, long story short, that's what he's doing. Now, just before um, she's queen lizard, Lizzie. <laughs> I'm now that person. I think she's a reptilian. I can't, I can't believe I said that. Reptilian. Um, yeah, I said it. She's a lizard queen. She's a lizard queen. You know who sang about the lizard queen? That's right. Jim Morrison sang. What is so itchy here? I'm getting itched out. The lizard queen, right? Well, lizard king. Sorry. He meant King Prince Philip. It's Prince. But if lizard dies, Lizzie dies, then her, her husband... I mean, her husband, her son, probably her husband, her son, Prince Charles. Yeah, Lizard King. There you go. Her son, Charles. Hi, Mindy. Oh, my God, Mindy. <laughs> um, if you're waiting for um, mail delivery orders, I went to the post office today, but it's another fake holiday for a fake president that was, you know, selected, not elected. Now, any, the Lizard King. Yeah, I said Lizard Queen. I meant Lizard King. Anyway, Prince Charles, and I quote, 
when he's fucking around with Camilla Parker Bowles, ugliest fucking woman on the planet. Fugly, no offense. Fugly, fugly as shit. He's fucking Diana, but no, that's not good enough. He leaves a voicemail message. Evidence, idiots. He leaves a voicemail message. You read my mind, Tampon King. He's like, I wish I was a tampon. <laughs> that guy's going to be king. That guy's going to run, run the monarchy. That guy. <laughs> right? That's who that guy is going to be. He's like, I wish I was a tampon and I could crawl up. And so I'm like, at first I thought he was a sick fucker, like it was a vagina thing. But now that I know that he's in the blood cult, it was before Diana died too. But now that I know, no, he said it publicly. Like they leaked the tape. I'm not even making this up, but it's a blood thing. It's a blood thing. He didn't care about her vagina. It could have been up her butt, but she wouldn't get her period then. Ugh, ugh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's a blood thing, y'all. It's blood. That's what it is. It's blood. So um, he is dead. Oh, yeah, okay, I know. But whoever that guy is running, tampon king. So that guy's going to be running the monarchy. I don't know what to say. Friends with Jimmy Savile. No, he they are vampires. He really did say that. He tampon vamp. I mean, that, that's a vampire. He was more speaking to the blood. Our mind goes to sex because I know they're Satanists. Mindy, <laughs> Mindy, you and I, Mindy, you and I are in the same same thing here. Um, so it's just, it's bizarre, but that's actually, uh, menstrual. Yeah. Menstrual blood. Well, you know, with Diana, with Diana, before she even got married, what they did is they broke her virginity and guess who was there? I think I said it. Um, queen ran out of andochrome. Yeah. She was, she can't go child hunting in Canada with the indigenous people anymore. Fucking bitch. Um, anyhow, I still did feel sorry for her when her, um, David Icke's been telling the truth. We think he's insane. I don't think he's insane, but he's been telling the truth. When Prince Philip died, I did feel sorry for her. I admitted it. I'm sorry. One lizard gone, one lizard down. <laughs> one lizard gone, one down. Um, exactly. I know. I know, Mindy. You and I are on the same same um, same thing, right? Thank you for that. Thank you, Linda. But here, but here's the thing. Also, understand. With Princess Diana, and I think I did it on her video, she was definitely sacrificed. She wasn't, she was born into an Illuminati, Satan, Freemason, Luciferian, whatever you want to call them, fucktard family, loser family of the 13 bloodlines. But when I did the video on her, literally, she showed me Dodi Fayed's um, father, whatever his name, the Herod's guy, the billionaire. He was there when she was 19 before she married Prince Charles, and they went up her hooch you know checking to see that she was a virgin as if you could tell like she has fucking fingers right she may not have had a dick up there but i'm pretty sure she was you know whatever anyway who am i maybe they don't do that in england i don't know but anyway they actually had diana's father this is what she showed me diana's father dodie's father dodie um so whatever his name is of herod's him um the queen and there were other family heads of other families and they literally took the 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 blood of um, diana so they broke her whatever and they took the blood and they took it away on a cloth this is a binding ritual okay so this is a binding ritual what they did and they do it with tra sex traffic kids yes the hymen blood but they do it with sex traffic kids and i'll tell you what they do when they're doing that they're stealing the blood of Am I crazy? Yeah, I'm not crazy. That's true. Um, when they take the blood of a sex trafficked child, the family, let's say in Haiti or wherever, her own father. Yeah, that's what she showed me. She showed me a group of people. It was a satanic ritual. They're binding her, okay? They're binding her to the royal family. She escaped, but she escaped to Dodi, Al Fayed, whatever. And his father was part of it. So it's predestined all the way along through the hierarchy of both of their families. It's a, it's a union. Diana didn't know that, but she's part of it. But they took her out. I mean, seriously, it's it's very strange. What they do, what they do um, with traffic kids out of like Africa, out of Haiti, out of third world 
countries with brown skinned babies, remember, they like the brown fucking skinned babies. What they do when they sex traffic them, so let's say they break their virginity at eight or nine or 12 or whatever. They steal that menstrual blood too and they do a binding ritual to the child so the child continues to go on and make money and make money. Remember, it's about money. It's about power. It's it's exactly, it's a lizard hierarchy. <laughs> I sound insane. Like, lucky I don't have little kids right now because they'd fucking take my little kids from me, right? Um, wait, what did you say, Michael? Come back here. What did you say? Where is he? Um, they like them because they're the easiest to get. Okay, yes. She used her, yeah. Well, Diana was part of an, a Luciferian family. They're not letting anybody marry that fugly Prince Charles. Fugly fugly okay fugly ass bitch they're not letting anybody marry him it, i mean he's got his perfect mate here he should have had kids with that but they sacrificed the mother and they did a ritual with diana she was literally i mean they ritually killed her period and they killed her in the hospital or they killed her on the way i forget what the video said what i got at the time but anyway she started to show me all of the underground tunnels that's how i learned about that it was that and, oh, of course, the indigenous people, yeah, the blood, but they take brown skin babies' blood from everywhere. I'm told to shut up, you know, around my kids and around my family when I talk like this. They're like, no one wants to hear it. But I'm like, you need to fucking hear it. If you can't see John Mark Lu or John Luke Burnell murdered in a high facility prison with no cameras and no guards watching him, okay, I'm sorry, suicided, and you don't see what's going on with Epstein with that, you don't see that, you don't see it, then you fucking are stupid. Um, and I can't talk to you. And if you support Trudeau, please remove yourself from my life. If you support Trudeau. Okay, please. <laughs> please. If you support Justin Castro Trudeau, communist Cuban leader, child, you need to not be my friend. Do not. Tracy here. Let's see. Oh my God, Tracy. Um, oh my God, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm laughing. Tracy, I swear to God, you got millions stashed somewhere. And you're very generous and I appreciate it so much. Um, somebody's my friend. I'm your friend. Yeah, you're all my friends. But if you vote for Trudeau, I cannot talk to you. At this point, it is a line in my life. If you defend Trudeau, um, they just scrubbed your screen during whatever you just said. Of course they did. Um, yeah, I usually get kicked off. But if you're fans of Justin Castro Trudeau, then I literally cannot be your friend. I cannot be your friend. I will not be your friend. I cannot be your friend. If you're a family member, I cannot. This is where I draw the line. <laughs> this is my boundary. Yes, Gia came through, right? Oh my God. I know I put two of them up, but Here's what I wanted to say. Okay, Pluto return. I know Tracy is beyond generous. I'm getting to the post office this week. I'm honestly getting to the post office this week. Um, I swear to God, I will get there. So your orders... They're calling me, which brings me back to, okay, are you losing me? What do you mean the sound's off? Sloan sound went. Can you hear me now? Shut up, really. Can you hear me? Am I muted? You're my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Am I muted here? I know I was on the phone. You got muted. You hear again. Okay. We all hear again. I'm back. I don't know what they do. They play fuckery games. Anyway, um, Pluto return tomorrow. There's a lot of new agers on TikTok, a lot of people online, and they're like, oh my God, the Pluto return is the best thing ever. It's the way we're going to shift our society into the, the new world. If you hear them say new world, understand they're brainwashed towards the, the new world order and the agenda 2030. The Pluto return is a complete and utter takeover of our complete 
Um, yeah, it's the fall of the Roman Sodom and Gomorrah. And this, it's definitely the fall of the Roman Empire, Sodom and Gomorrah. But, um, ew, tampon. <laughs> oh, God, you just freaked me out. <laughs> so when people, okay, when people are, let's see. Yes, can hear you now. Thank God. Okay, so when people actually... Um, literally believe in the Pluto return and they describe it as in order to get the world in the new way that it's going to go all love and peace. Hear me clear. Who is that? Do you hear that? They keep calling. They keep calling. I don't know who it is, but they're calling me and I don't like them. They're not my friend. <laughs> um, no, it's whoever's calling me. I'm going to have to block the number. Yeah, it's pissing me off. I don't know who's calling me. And whoever it is, they need to stop. Okay, so um, I can't because I'm on the phone. No, it isn't my ex. He's not calling me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that number. Um, my voice is gone again. Are you kidding me? Are y'all kidding me? Okay, that's weird. Must be Trudeau. Yeah. Oh, she left a voicemail, whoever it is. Yeah, I can't deal with it. I'm just looking to see if I missed a reading or anything. But anyway, we have the Pluto return coming up, okay? So we have the Pluto return. It's Suge. Oh, my God, I got to tell you about Suge Knight. Lori calls me this morning, and she's like, yeah, I had one last phone call with him, and he thought he – he called Lori thinking he was talking to me, and he wanted – Lori's like, he really wanted your lips to do something. And I'm like, did you cuss them out? And she's like – yeah, I told him he wasn't talking to Sloan. He was talking to Lori. <laughs> and, and so she hung up on him. Um, anyway, I just told her, just like you can tell him that he can line his lips around there. He really did. He's been calling her. He just literally been calling her, blathering on, blah, 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 like that, right? Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you. I'm calling because, oh, Okay, well, you is it you calling? Hold on. I, I can't give Deanna's number out here, but I didn't see it before I went on air. So I'm going to text you from another number. Don't ever call me on that number. I'll have to disconnect it, but I'm going to text you Deanna's number, okay? So if you called on that number, I'm going to text you right now her number. So I apologize for that. I can't keep track of her shit right now because I literally went on air and it's booking too late. I should have cut the booking down, but I'm going to text you on a different number. Okay, honey. Uh, let me find, let me find it. Let me find. Okay. So I will text you from a different phone. This is why now I know who it is. It's somebody for Deanna. So let me, I'm copying it and then call her. The message is, I mean, if you're calling Deanna, Deanna's on my schedule now, y'all. So it's, I'm not working, she's working. So if you want to book her, but if you book her tonight, understand I'm already on here. So whatever. Anyway, I can't. I'm like, who the fuck is calling me? <laughs> Maybe it's Suge Knight, but it's not. Okay, so let me, let me send it to you right now. Okay, I'm just sending you her number, um, Deanna's number. Now I got to text her. And let her know she has another person. Anyway, sorry, you guys. So um, if you look on my website, go. I'm not booking right now. So the only booking you have is Deanna. And she charges slightly less than me. Um, so, yeah. She try, she she charges slightly less. So go, go find her on there. And she's from Sunday to Wednesday. So, and she works from six to nine. Okay. So understand that. Um, yeah, I've got to text Deanna now and let her know. She thought she had, she, and she'll fit you in if she can't. So don't worry about it. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm delaying you. I have another client. I'm, this is my, another client. This is Sloan. She doesn't even have this number. Um, so what should I do for 220? I'm going to tell you in a second, y'all. Um, she's calling now. This is Sloan. I'm live. Okay, there, I just sent it to her. All right, so there you go. So you guys can look on my website. Deanna's going to work Sunday to Wednesday from like six to nine. So you can book her. And if you, oh, yeah, how do I book? Go to sloanbella.com and go to readings. And so 
excuse me, I'm not booking them right now because I still have more to do this week. So Dan is on my website. Yeah, she's just going to work through me. So y'all want to know this is our arrangement. So she's going to do that. She's six to nine Sunday to, I think she said Wednesday. So we just got the schedule up and Paul's supposed to send the message with her phone number, but Paul had to take his niece to the hospital so he didn't get that information up. So I guess it's coming through me. So I don't know who the fuck's booked when the fuck they're booked, right? So I apologize for being an a-hole. Um, so I have my backup phone and I'm calling, so call her. All right, I'm over. All right, so 222-22. Aw, 222 is your nephew's birthday and he's 10. Aw, Lila's age. Yeah, I hate Trudeau too. I fucking hate him. Okay, it's my birthday today, 222, baby. Well, you, you in particular have a complete, um, you have a complete Pluto return on your birthday. So the Pluto return, again, back to all the, I hate fucking Trudeau. I hate Trudeau. He should go back into the wormhole of which he was hashed, okay? So here's the thing with the, with the, Pluto return. A lot of new agers are on TikTok are like, oh, you know, this is going to be so good. It's changing the world into love and light. I'm like, you're fucking insane if you think that. We are straight up going into 2020, 2030, agenda 2030, okay? Good. If you, if you like Trudeau, you have to get off my YouTube. I'm kidding. You're entitled, but I can't be your friend. Anyway, um, agenda 2030, as David Icke has talked about for 25, and the new agers are full of shit. Okay. They are full of shit when they talk about it because the antichrist comes in the, in the name of love. So he presents himself as love. That's what he presents himself as. And this planet is not all about love and light. You cannot go walking wherever in a bad neighborhood, all love and light. Like I'm going to be kind and they're going to be kind back. They may be, but literally, you need to be careful. Now, Pluto, how is it going to affect you guys on a one-on-one -on -one level? Okay, so when Pluto comes around, Pluto, new age is crap. Pluto, okay, when Pluto comes around, here's the problem. Pluto says, what needs to be removed out of your life? What do you need to, <coughs> what do you need to um, move forward in your life? And let's say you're holding on to, your lip liner, and you won't do anything without your lip liner. Pluto's going to come and fucking take that lip liner <laughs> and throw it out till you have a nervous breakdown. It removes everything that's no longer needed in your life, okay? Uh -huh. He's definitely Castro's son. So it is a purge time, but you need to be really, 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 really careful because what you have been struggling against, so like, let's say... um. <coughs> excuse me, I got to read this. Okay, the boarding school 87 had tunnels, goat sculptures on the walls and formal. We all convinced the armor meat family who built the mansion. Oh, definitely. Born, born a Hawkeye. Oh God, well, they're, they're, yes, they're Masons. And they're, another word for that is Luciferians. That's another word for that, okay? Um, Pluto, when it comes, because we are going into the Pluto return and we have Mars and Venus moving together right now, intense connections with people. But here's the thing. If you've come out of something, say, that's domestic violent or some kind of stressful thing in your life or whatever, right? If you've come out of any of those types of things, the universe will send that energy back to you to see if you've really learned. Because if you haven't learned, Pluto will smack you and bitch slap you from here to Sunday, okay? So, uh, oh, hi, Eric, how are you? Um, you're, Yeah, Eric, you got court again or did they lock you up again? <laughs> Poor Eric. Fuck those people, Eric. Anyway, with the Pluto return, okay, literally with the Pluto return, you can expect to have things come back into your life, things that are problematic for you, things that are um, things that you need out of your life. Um, yeah, protection is needed. Prayers are needed. Prayers, okay, definitely prayers. Um, another thing I would do in the Pluto return is I wouldn't be attached to anything. In other words, if you have an idea like, I want that job, I want that man, I want that girl, I want that house, whatever it is, I would not be attached to it because as soon as Pluto feels obsession, that's when you've got a problem with the obsession, okay? So um, 
It's the obsessive compulsive nature. So a Plutonian affair is very passionate and very stalkerish. A Plutonian situation is like, uh, you know, Jim Jones, Guyana, drink the fucking Kool-Aid and go down with it. That's what it is. Oh my God, the obsession. So you really need to be careful. You need to be careful. Yes, you can have joy, you can have love, but understand this planet is the beast system. Um, oh, pets and people, all kinds of people. If you have... If you literally have planets that are cardinal planets, yeah, no ex, Erica, no expectations. Present in the moment. Remember, what is a soul trap? A soul trap is the belief that the past still hinders us. We are not our past. I am not a 10 year old chewing bubble gum, wearing my fuzzy boots like Prince. I'm not that girl, okay? Even though Prince stole my boots, cracking up over that. Okay, so I'm not that person. All I have is right now, I'm talking to you right here. And what I envision in the future, whatever it is, is literally not happened. So I'm wasting my time worrying about that or worrying about that instead of focused on this. So the way to get through a um, Pluto return or Pluto in your chart, I have Pluto in the first house, so I live this. It's perfectly fucking fine. But so the way to get over it is to not be attached to anything. So it's to enjoy the moment, whatever the moment is. Also, keep in mind, cardinal planets, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, all of those planets are being affected right now. You guys have been affected by a grand square. You guys have just been affected. Um, yeah, Trudeau might get his comeuppance because he is a Capricorn. And I think he's a Cancer... See, a Cancer Moon Aries Rising or Aries Moon Cancer Rising, whatever he is, he's not a man's man. He is a fucking vagina and an ugly one, okay? Sorry, did I say that? But that's what he is. Oh my God, he's such a piece. He's such a, ah, uh, I can't. When you listen to him fucking talk, he's such a fucking pussy ass bitch. Like you're just sitting there going, how is this guy running a country? How, I know, Libra, Cancer, Aries, or Capricorn. Um, no, it's okay. You, This is the tail end of that. The Pluto return is coming. What the Pluto return is, is when this country was founded, right? When this country was founded, there is a natal chart snapped into the, the memory of the country. The conception. It's the conception of the country. As we know, the United States of America. This is when Pluto comes back into its exact degree, so Pluto is coming back, so pretend we're a person, not a country, coming right back into its natural degree, smacking the shit out of us. So somebody says I'm a sexy lady. They call me a lady. Thank you. <laughs> Are you Suge Knight? Are you doing this from jail on your, on your shit? I'm um, hilarious. I'm sorry. I had to say that. Okay. Anyway, um, so you really have to watch during a Pluto return. Power, power control, power struggles, okay? If you're if you enter into a sexual relationship, compulsive power struggles. So it depends what you're trying to avoid. I know it's what well, should night. I mean, he's called him Lori. The number is registered to him. He's in prison and apparently he's leaving Lori love messages for us. Yeah. Sorry, not my type. Not my type, Shug. <laughs> He's probably like, what's this crazy bitch saying? Oh my God, I'm sorry. It strikes me as hilarious. Um, Oh my God, right? Like what the fuck is wrong with them? I guess they got nothing to do in jail and they got a bunch of guys. So, you know, they got a bunch of men, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's hilarious. Um, Yeah, I can't believe it. Like this is just the most absurd thing. <laughs> He's been calling Lori on behalf of both me and Lori. So because we were handing out these, which I'm going to just bring up again, but here, see, with the QR codes, because we were handing out these, he's got only men in jail. They probably booked the hookers in there. Come on. You know that the guard, they got a sexy guard. She, he's obsessed. Oh my God. He's got so many Pluto squares. It's not even funny. I'm Pluto in Virgo in the first house. Okay. I'm lit. Pluto in the 12th house is difficult. That's what that Gia had, that little model Gia. She had that. Anyway, here's the QR code for the compact. So here's the compact. Oh, well, it comes in the little bag that we put it in. Here's the compact 50. <laughs> um, anyway, there's 
There's the QR code. You just use your phone like this and you pull up the menu and there it is, right? So anyway, apparently Suge did not like this. He did not like this. And apparently Lori got a call and he, somebody on the other end of the, <laughs> somebody on the other end of the phone wanted Lori and I to come. <laughs> what? Oh, they are in prison. Wanted me and Lori to come visit him. So this is for Suge Knight. I, I got some special lipstick for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It strikes me as fucking absurd. I can't. I can't. I can't. No, we can, we'll give you the compacts. You have to go to the teen project, Pimp Daddy. Pimp Daddy, I'm looking so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got to stop before I get murdered. Um, okay, so anyway, I they don't take funny. But remember, <laughs> okay, the QR code goes to the teen project. Okay, they're actually called Cindy Croft. Yes, they did call Cindy. I don't, yeah, of course he's a snake. He's a snake with a phone in. <laughs> the QR code is for the shelter. So if you know a traffic girl or, <laughs> I'm sorry. If you know a traffic girl, I'm sorry, I'm having a nervous breakdown. If you know a, a traffic girl or a girl in a hotel, like we put the flyers up in the hotels and all of that. In fact, if you're, if you're in Canada and you need escaping, QR code. And it goes straight to the teen project and all of the different shelters. So. They can dispense an Uber for you immediately. And <laughs> I promise I'm not showing. <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. Oh, thank you so much, Capricorn here, whose dog is my therapy pet. How do we not remain attached to our pets? We are attached to our pets. What are you talking about? And I'm not on any drinks or anything. I'm just insane. But anyway, this goes to the teen project. So when the kids, if they go into a hotel, we stuck these little QR codes all over every hotel. Yeah, you would think I was drinking, but I'm really not. Um, anyhow, we stuck them everywhere. So if a girl goes in and she can get away in a bathroom for a split second, and she sees that in a bathroom stall, we put the QR codes in there, not the compacts, the Q, the co they're gonna click it. So they can get help right away. They can get help immediately. They can be taken out of their situation. And the older girls working the street, if they see the younger ones, they can send them the QR code and they can do that, right? So um, yeah, Pluto, you mentioned no attachments. No, Pluto, no attachments whatsoever. Don't have an investment in an outcome. So if you're going for a job interview and you haven't, you know, you want the job because it's like a, a great job, right? And all of that, don't have an investment in it. Literally say, I'm going for a job interview, stay focused in the present and then worry about whether you get that job, you know, later or not, but don't focus on it. If you attach to it in, in a compulsive way, I need to have that job. I need to pay my bills. I need to whatever you're, you will get the job, but it might become really compulsive or it may become something that you don't actually want. And they may hire you for something they didn't actually hire you for. So you end up getting ripped off at the time anyway. Right? So no, no, no attachment to anything. If you have a new friend, a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, no attachments, really neutral. Because with the Pluto, with the Pluto um, return, it's going to be just something. No woman is that in that line of work. Is there? No. I. Oh, don't you love how men always say, well, you know, she's really sexual. Well, no, she was really sexually abused in childhood. Deal with it. Um, so yeah, I get sick of, I get sick of saying it. Um, eighth house, Pluto and Libra run like fucking hell. Be careful of the sexual, sexual, um, attachments you gain with a, with an eighth house Pluto. Okay. So how long is Pluto going to last? Pluto is going to be pretty intense until the end of the year. Does it matter where? It yes. It matters where transiting Pluto hits in your chart. As I said, my son died with Pluto in my fifth house transiting transit is to move so look at a person who's a baby in life like they're born they transition throughout their lifetime and they develop into a different person five-year-old 10-year-old 20-year-old 30-year-old so they are constantly morphing and changing the planets are constantly moving through your chart so they put planets, you have to look and see where Capricorn is in your chart because wherever Capricorn is placed is where Pluto is going to be by degree. 
So, and if you're a Capricorn sun, it's going to be on your sun by degree. Okay. If it's in the last degrees, uh, if, if you're a cancer, it's, it's in opposition. If you're a Libra or you're an Aries, it's squaring. So if you're a rising sun or moon, that's what's actually happening there. So there's huge changes to the self when that Capricorn rising, huge changes. Remember, okay, I'll do this real quick. All right, here we go. If, if, okay, yeah, you've got Pluto in your fifth. That's my problem. Capricorn, it's transiting through my fifth. My son died. So every time it hits this kind of aspect in my life, you know, when I'm looking at it, uh, I don't, oh, son, do you think it was Suge Knight touching my head? I don't think it was Gia touching your head during the reading. That's okay. Thanks, Karen. It was probably Suge Knight <laughs> manifesting out of jail. <laughs> No, I can feel them when they try to get in through the crown. So that's how it works for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know, I've got to stop making jokes. Like, I really have to. <laughs> really have to stop. Okay, anyway, Pluto in the first house. I'm going to do this quick. So just, yeah, I know, right? Um, oh, you just took your son to rehab. That's fantastic. As long as he's in rehab, you know he's safe and you know where he is. However, do watch the movie Body Broker. Because, yeah, Suge Knight is still alive, I know, but he could manifest on the astral level. Remember, all of these politicians, all of these Illuminati members, all of these Freemasons, all of these Luciferians can manifest on the astral level, right? They can. They definitely can. So they know what we're doing a hell of a lot sooner than we know what we're doing. So they already know what we're doing, okay? So Cap Moon and Cap Rising, yeah, if it's going to hit you like that, yeah, that's exactly right. And those who do spirit cooking, don't do spirit cooking. Well, because you're capturing a soul, like what you're doing is capturing an entity and putting it into an inanimate object in order to trap it, much like a genie in a bottle, a gen, a genie. That's what they're doing. Started with King Solomon, started back then, but that's why Prince Andrew has those 72 teddy bears. He's trapped entities, energies. Just look at everything as energy. We're pure energy. This physicality isn't necessarily here. Genie in a bottle, exactly. But that is what they're doing. Haunted dolls, that's what they're doing. They're trapping. And a lot of people do that in order to use them to gain strength and power on this side. This is literally, 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 it's a keeper of souls doll. And in some of the metaphysical shops in Los Angeles, they have clown dolls, keeper of souls dolls. They have them placed right out in front of your fucking eye when you walk in. So you're going in to get a little love candle or a money candle or a health candle. And they've got a keeper of souls sitting right there in their stores. So understand that. That I know for a fact. And it's a true thing. Even if people want to call you crazy and say that they don't... Um, you know, understand things or whatever. That's exactly what is going on. I know I don't do clowns or dolls either, but that's exactly what's going on. So let's talk about Pluto in the first house. Pluto, when it goes through your first house or is in your first house, let's do the transit of this Pluto in Capricorn in your first house. In just if it's, if, if you're Capricorn rising, it's going in the first house. The first house is your rising sign. The first house is the self. Pluto, clowns scare me too, Pluto is hitting yourself, your sense of self. So something about your appearance can change. A lot of people will get plastic surgery with Pluto in the first house. Um, you could even like change your hair, change your color, um, you know, the color of your hair, change your makeup, change your style. And to the extreme could be literally plastic surgery. And to the extreme of that could be some sort of accident where your self is changed, where you're literally thrown out of the self and you have to become a different self. That's a first house Pluto transiting. Now, it depends what it hits in your chart. Is it is it conjuncting anything? Is it squaring anything? Is it in opposition to anything? So if it just goes through your first house, it's literally hitting yourself. So you, with Pluto on your ascendant, you will become more aggressive, more opinionated, and it's Capricornian, so you're going to set your foundations and your boundaries, right? So um, that's what's going to happen there. Now, if it's in, then it's going through. There you go. There you go, sweetie Lee. There you go. So because Pluto is the ultimate transformation. So when it transits your first house, literally, you will change the self. You could lose 100 pounds. You could go for gastric bypass surgery. You could get a BBL. Don't get a BBL. The fat moves, y'all. Don't do it. Some of us ladies are trying to lose our BBLs, okay? So anyway, you can do that. 
Um, you can get literal plastic surgery on your face and it can be as minute as like changing hair color, contacts, all of that kind of thing. Um, and then things like accidents that throw you out of your natural self, Pluto in the first house. Pluto in the second house. That's your foundation and that's your money and that's your foundation, your belief system, okay? Um, that's good. That has to do with your relationship, squaring. Just squaring is, is fighting. Conjunction is married. Opposite is opposite, okay? Like I'm opposite you, opposite, right? So when you hear those aspects, they're opposite. So tug of war, right? Squaring, boxing, right? Conjunct traveling together. All right. So if it's conjunct a planet traveling together, second house is foundation, finances, money, and your belief system, your foundation. So like if you're Catholic, it doesn't matter if you have anything in the first house. I just explained things transit, they move your entire life. So you may not have anything. I don't have anything in, in I only have things in three houses. The rest of my chart is empty. Things transit. My son died on a transit. Pluto went through my fifth house of children and squared retrograde Mars in Cancer. That And my Cancer by nature is in, my Mars by nature is in Cancer in opposition to transiting Mars. That's opposition and my child died. That's exactly what the fuck happened. So anyway, the second house, I'm going through them all. The second house is your foundation, your belief system, um, the, if you're born Catholic and you come from a Catholic society, I know what Trudeau is. He's a big P-E-D-O. I got that. So was his father who was a gay one. His mother, she must have needed to drink a lot. I don't know. Anyway, through the second house, you might change your foundation, your belief system. You may change it due to things. And this is interesting. The re Why would you change a belief system if you've had a belief system, right? Why would you change a belief system? Because something traumatic happened to trigger it. So like, did you get an STD from somebody? Um, did somebody rob you? Did you go to your job and they spent your 401k? So you had to change your foundation, right? You had to change the foundation of your thinking, of your belief system. So that's exactly what Pluto through the second house would be. Now, Pluto through the third house intensifies your family connections to your siblings straight up. So the conversations in your immediate environment, your house, your siblings, mainly your siblings, will become quite intense. So this may be when you hear information about what your siblings went through. My natal chart says Pluto and Scorpio, but how do we know where it is? Because it's in Capricorn right now. So you need to get an ephemeris or a book. Okay, so here's a really easy, this is a... This is my day-to-day -day book right here. Here it is, Daily Planetary Guide. And it has what's called an ephemeris for the year. So go to the back, where are we in? February. This is an ephemeris. How does this? This is an ephemeris. It marks everything. You go to your planet here, Pluto, and it tells you what degree. So it's at 2733. So it tells you the movement of the planets in the back, okay? This is just simple. It's Llewellyn and what is it, $15, $13? Right there, planetary guide. Ephemeris for the year in the back, really simple. Start familiarizing yourself with it. Front, it tells you all the eclipses, new moons, full moons, and everything. So it will tell you that. The rest of that you have to understand. Um, anyway, the third house is your immediate environment. So it's your siblings, your um, people you deal with, your style of communication can become more intense. So this can be somebody who, let's see something, it's, I can't. Um, anyway, the, I can't read and talk. Oh my God. Okay. So anyway, it can be, it can be definitely something that really alters the way that you communicate in such a strong way. So you can find yourself being like find out something that happened to one of your siblings and it can really change the way that you choose to look at life and how you educate yourself. Again, if you have squares, that's conflictive. If you have oppositions, that's back and forth energy. If you have um, conjunctions, that's married energy, just to name three of them, okay? Venus, Venus and Pluto together. Yeah, you need to watch. They say it's a portal. I'm not fucking going out on a, on a Pluto return portal. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Okay. Are you crazy? Pluto square Pluto. Ah. Um, are you crazy? 
okay? Are you literally crazy to meditate, to go out in a portal during a Pluto return? Yeah, they want to trap your soul out there. I wouldn't do that. I'm not putting my moon water out and my crystals are not going out during a Pluto return. Why the fuck would I do that? Okay, no. Okay, so, um, oh, thank you. Kenna helped me with my makeup. She didn't put it on. She picked everything for me. This is all Kenna's. Um, she's trying to make me look cute. Kenna's trying to make me look cute. Um, anyway, so yeah, I've got to go through the signs. So first of all, Pluto in the fourth house. Okay, when Pluto hit my fourth house, one degree in, in Sagittarius, okay? My fourth house is Sag. That's when Keith and Jason's brother died. It was at one degree of Sag. It crossed the, it crossed the house cusp. I, my stepson passed. So Pluto in the fourth house can mean the death of the house, meaning earthquake, natural disaster. Uh, what is it when the snow falls down? Avalanche. Uh, it can mean transformation within the house. It can also mean plumbing problems in the most literally. And it can mean, um, can mean all kinds of other things that go on. So Pluto in the fourth and it can mean a family member who's completely out of control, like little Trudeau in your house. I'm, I'll am i meditate during the Pluto return, but I'm not going to sit there and try to open up a fucking portal. Are you crazy? No, 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 no. I'm not going to try to do that. Um, so anyhow, so the Pluto return is going to end when it gets out of a three degree orb. That's how I read it. And I think it's going to be... Scorpio, Moon, Mercury, Pluto in the 12th. Okay, yeah, I can't assess your chart that quickly, but thank you so much for that. If you're Capricorn rising, Pluto's... Cro if Pluto crosses your ascendant, it's death of self from the 12th. But I'll talk about that as I get to the 12th. Fourth house, so it can be a death of somebody in the house. And remember, it's on the parental axis. So the bottom of the house is the mother, the top is the father, traditionally, traditionally, traditionally. So it can be that. Now, Pluto in the, because do you want to go out on a portal during the most intense energy that is like the breakdown of society? Like, um, yeah, I'm timeline jumping all the time anyway. And actually it's pretty fun. So I'm ignoring people and their bullshit and I'm timeline jumping like a motherfucker. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. But anyway, um, uh, what was I going to say? Pluto in the fourth, remember, it's on the parental axis of the chart, so it can literally shut you down, or you can find out family secrets that you don't want to actually know, right? So let me look at Pluto's degree. Yeah, we're in it till the end of the year. I think it's. I think the last hit is December something of this year, and then it's going to move on. Um, yes, selling your house. Yes, selling your house. Pluto shifting the energy, moving. Absolutely. Pluto in the fifth. Okay. I'm living. I, I am going to timeline jump tonight. And when I wake up, I'm going to meditate anyway, but I'm protecting myself with God, but I'm not deliberately opening up a fucking portal to cross myself out on the middle of a, a Pluto return. So I can fucking see what I don't want to see. No, thank you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> um, Okay, so anyway, Pluto through the fifth, that is where transiting Pluto is for me and has been and is what's caused, basically my son died with it in the fifth. The fifth is your children, the fifth is your creative energy, and the fifth is love affairs. Love affairs as opposed to marriage. Pluto will transiting through your fifth can mean intense, compulsive love affairs, like compulsively drawn and compulsively pulled apart. It can also mean intense work. It can mean intensity with your children, finding out you have a child that's a drug addict, a prostitute, stripper, whatever. Um, I need a love affair. Well, you better hope it's going through your fifth. Anyway, it can be very, very intense with it there. And it is always a power struggle. Remember that wherever Pluto is, it is a power struggle. So yes, I well, I haven't caught Keith yet, but I, I keep getting messages from Keith. I love my Keith more than anything, um, as you know. Okay, so Pluto is compulsively and it's a power. Mars squares Pluto. You don't go out. You stay home, Mars square Pluto. No, no, no. Anything with Pluto and Mars together is combustible and fiery. Like that's just a no-no. Pluto and Venus and Mars, don't go out. Like just don't. Um, yeah, I know. I'm from Nazi Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm in Nazi Los Angeles too with doofus and doofus. Garcetti and, I mean, yoga pants and uh, Newsome. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, sorry, I made the face. So Pluto through your sixth house. Understand, Pluto through your sixth house. 
Sudden change in your physicality, okay? Sudden change in your physicality. So how is your health? Extremes, surgery, post-op extremes, different kinds of surgery, and also with your work, okay? We're talking about Pluto transiting in Capricorn right now. That is what it is. It is a breakdown of the traditional society system because it's Pluto, right? So, and it's in Capricorn and that's your traditional whatever. So through the sixth, um, through the sixth house, hi, Ashley. Oh my gosh, Ashley, yoga pants. You know that fucker yoga pants. He's probably a lizard in yoga pants. Think about that for a second. So anyway, Pluto through the sixth is a change in your physicality. Like it's literally a change, okay? Literally a change. Um, and then when it goes through the seventh house, the seventh is in opposition to your to, to your ascendant. So the seventh house, marriage power struggles. If it's going through your seventh house, marriage power struggles. Marriage power struggles. Um, I saw your Kanye video. I don't think I did a Kanye video. <laughs> I shouldn't do a Kanye video. Anyway, marriage power struggles, partnership power struggles. The seventh house is marriage, but it's also outside partnerships. So those power struggles, right? Um, so we have marriage, um, we have marriage and partnerships of all kinds, business partnerships, all of that. So when it's in the eighth house, Pluto in the eighth, y'all get ready for some fucked up sexual shit. This is your call girls, your hookers, your street walkers, your strippers, people in the sex industry, people who decide to do dominatrix shit in the middle of whatever. They're like, I think I just want to be beaten tonight with a whip. Those people, Pluto transiting through your eighth can be tax problems, can be life and death situations. More importantly, it's usually sexual experimentation, but it is in Capricorn. So you may be trying to let go of, um, you talked, oh, about Kanye. Well, he, yeah, he is brain controlled. He really is. I mean, it's obvious. Um, but anyway, the eighth house, when, when Pluto's transiting through the eighth, it, understand that it's going to bring up sexual issues and maybe conformity or non-conformity. Okay. If you have a stellium in Capricorn in any house it's in, it's going to cross over it systematically. Oh, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so we have that kind of thing going on. I'm extraordinary beautiful tonight. That's because I have the sparkly eyeshadow on y'all. Uh, I wanted to wear it since Kenna picked it for me. So, wait. Um, yeah, so the eighth house is like your nice, mild-mannered accountant that comes home and says, you know what, I think I want to get my ass stepped on by some six-inch stilettos and goes out to the sex club to finally, you know, shake it loose, right? So he's that guy. So then we have the ninth house, Pluto in the ninth. Now, this is very, um, aw, thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. So Pluto transiting through the ninth can be literally something to do with your homeland if you're from a different country, literally, like the situation of your homeland, where you're from. It can also be literally the uprooting of your educational ideas. So you could be going to nursing school, doctor school, vet school, beauty school, and you can in a second, change the direction of that, but it has more to do with when you're not in your natural environment. So if you're from Tel Aviv, if you're from Florida, if you're from Canada, it's the state of your homeland. Like where, and where are you traveling to, right? Um, <laughs> shake it loose, right? Like whatever. <laughs> um, no, there's never a good house for Pluto to be in. It's transformative to the umpteenth degree. It smashes the shit out of the energy of the house that it lives in until you crawl on your knees begging to die and then it lifts you up and makes you take a different route. It is a soul-crushing experience, Pluto. And that's what I'm going to say. It went through my house of kids and my kid died. I mean, I you know, whatever. Pluto doesn't fuck around. It does not fuck around. And the first time it went through my house of home, my stepson died one degree. So I'm saying every time Pluto transits on a house cusp for me, it literally fucks up my life big time. Um, so I literally one degree over the ascendant and Jimmy died. It just literally went into one degree of Sagittarius and my stepson passed, but that is in my house of home. He lived in the home. And he was my stepson, not my son. My child died when it crossed through my fifth, as I told you, as you know. 
So Pluto, to me, and I was born with it in the first house. So when you look at it, you know, literally I was adopted. So that is like a first house Plutonian type of thing, right? So when you're looking at it, when you're looking at it, um, hold on. Okay, six house, I'm getting teeth removed. No, honey, honey, Kayla, If what I said is when Pluto transits the sixth house, you are literally dealing with health issues. You have no choice. So it's perfectly good for you to do that. That is a Pluto in the sixth house event that you're talking about with your teeth and your implants for health reasons. It's exactly what I said. It's not bad. You have to do it. When Pluto's there, it makes you change. It brings you to your knees where you have to change, period. Like it will kill you which it did when I saw my son on the ground. That was Pluto. That right there was Pluto. That's the description of that. When my stepson died, blew my world apart, blew our home apart, okay? Blew, literally blew up my kid's childhood. Keithy was 10 months old. Blew it up, period. My life was never the same. And it's not the same now either. So wherever Pluto ends up, you will change against your will because none of us want to change, really, quite frankly. So... Pluto is nothing to fuck around with. That's why when you change, you should always be changing. Oh, it changes things big time. So when Pluto, as I said, is in your ninth, that is your education, your higher minded things. And also literally wherever you travel to, you need to pay attention. So this is someone who could travel to an area where they have a tsunami, where they, Pluto, tsunamis, earthquakes that destroy everything. Um, plane crashes. These are all Plutonian things. Think of water damage in your house coming underneath the ground that you don't see until it floods the whole fucking place. That's Pluto. Those hurricanes that take out trailer parks, Pluto. That's Pluto. That's Pluto and Pluto don't fuck around. So Pluto in the 10th, straight up, it's on the parental axis again. It connects to the father but it connects to your career. 10th house is career, 6th house is work and health. 10th house is career. So Pluto through the 10th is really, quite frankly, um, depending on if you have planets there, what you have there, it's literally going to uproot you from your career. So these are people with Pluto in the 10th. They get fired online for Twitter comments. They are truck drivers, peacefully protesting and some weirdo in a diaper wearing pink lacy panties and a tampon up his ass comes in and blocks their money. That is Pluto in the 10th, okay? So that is what that is. And remember, Pluto continually moves around your chart and it moves very slowly, but it continues moving throughout your life. So it goes in and out of different areas. So when Pluto hits the 11th house, Pluto in the 11th, this means you could acquire a shit ton of like gangster friends, gang bangers. No, Deanna doesn't do charts. And I'm not opening yet until I'm finished. <laughs> Three more left. Um, okay, so Pluto in the 11th is, <clears throat> Pluto in the 11th is basically the friends that you acquire. So the friends that you acquire could be quite dangerous. You could be friends with somebody like Suge Knight in jail, right? New friend, transiting Pluto through the 11th, gang banging gangster, murderer, rap, whatever he is, could become your best friend. Uh, John Gotti, best friend. Uh, Pluto in the 11th, complete unearthing of what your friends are really doing, whatever that is, right? Whatever that is. So your friends could be doing shit, drug dealing, trafficking, and you might find it. No, Pluto's not my friend, actually. <laughs> gang banging. You know what I mean by that? That's such an LA term. So it could definitely be that. When Pluto crosses into your 12th house, get the fuck. Yes, I did know John. Well, I knew John Gotti's right hand guy. I worked for the family in Florida for one of his offshoot people. Yes. Um, so, yes, that's exactly. But I have a first house Pluto, so I attract aggression anyway. Um, okay, so 12th house. This to me is what you need to pay attention to. Pluto in the 12th house. This is an uprooting of past life contracts and secret enemies that live in this life. Can't trust people. So this is a past life uprooting, right? When Pluto by transit crosses through 
from the 12th to the 1st, this means you completely transform. So you can become an entirely different person. But in the 12th, it's literally your past life connecting with this life and all of your hidden enemies. And Pluto is not fucking around. Do you know they, they segregated Pluto to a dwarf planet? It's dwarf my ass, okay? It's not dwarf. It's pretty intense. Everything like my ex. Yeah, your ex is a perfect example of Plutonian behavior. It's controlling. It's power struggle. It's narcissistic. It's punitive. It's vindictive. These are all Pluto. Now, if you can get along with Pluto, it's fine. I have yet to get along with Pluto because it kills my children. So, And I keep wording it like that because, just because, it just, just because. Anyway, it's even worse than Scorpio. Pluto is Scorpio's ruling planet. So yeah, don't forget gaslighting. Yeah, Pluto's always pissed off. But the reason Pluto is, yes, nuclear, nuclear, bombastic, nuclear, blow it on up, blow it on up, that's Pluto. But here's the thing. Yes, Pluto went over, Keith had a stellium in, in um, Capricorn. He had sun conjunct Jupiter, okay, in Sag, which was great. And then he had moon conjunct Pluto out of sign. That's his mother. That would be me. Power struggle with the mom. Okay, like his Pluto was conjunct the moon. So that's his mother is a medium, actually. Pluto on the moon, Pluto on the sun. These, these are mediumship and power struggle. But anyway, he had uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, all in Capricorn. So Pluto systematically hit over everything. And I think it hit his Neptune on the day he died, I think. So um, yeah, Pluto's a bitch, but it's designed to break your soul down from its ego structure, literally break your ego down so that you cannot hide behind your ego. You are broken. And from the point of being broken, you are able to elevate the soul's path because you are not stuck in the ego. So wherever Pluto comes in and destroys, it fractures the ego so that you don't, because we're, we're egoic on the planet. Like we all, you know, it's very transformative, but you don't get a say in how you transform. The, the mistake, I know she's just stretching. She's, she's over there. You don't get a say in how you transform. It just literally comes in and transforms period, whether you like it or not. It's not about what we like. It's about the soul's transition in life and how we move through different things. And so the soul on a whole is going to stay stuck in the ego, right? We're human beings. We want to look cute, be cute, gather money, do all that ego shit, be a Kanye, you know, be a rapper, be a rock and roller, be a movie star, own a famous restaurant, get a Pulitzer Prize, win the Olympics, whatever. We all have these high, go to Harvard, highfalutin dreams. And it's all based on ego and how people will see us. Pluto comes in and literally rips it. So the ego is removed from that area of your life. First house, second house. See, Pluto in the first house is going to rip away your ego. Even though I'm a Leo, my ego still remains, but it's going to rip it apart. The crystal that I'm using for, for this, I know, uh, yeah, no, Pluto is just like Jesus. Yeah, 245 years or whatever it is. Is it 245 years? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, look, this is the, the crystal I'm using. I don't think it makes sense, but it's just the one I've picked. This is a Lumerian quartz point. And you see the ridges? Can you see the ridges? I don't know if you can see the ridges. Anyway, that's what makes it a Lumerian point. And it takes me out of there. The ridges are right on the side. And I use it like this. The ridges actually activate your DNA. So I, Lumerian quartz, exactly. Oh, Ashley, you of course know about this. Ashley's got a whole horde of crystals at her house. I know this. But look, yeah, it was Jack's birthday on the 18th. It was baby Jack's birthday. He had a birthday. Yeah, little baby Jack. So he had his surgery on his little legs and everything. And he's all good, baby Jack. I forgot to take him a present. I'm going to have to. But anyway, look. So a Lumerian crystal, if you can see the ridges here. The ridges, now keep in mind, Lumerian crystals come from Lumerian planets. And when you, atmosphere, when you rub the energy with your thumb, which is how it's supposed to be this, when you rub it, 
it opens your DNA up to elevate the structure of your DNA and recode it. That is why I'm using Lumerian during this time. I'm using anything to get me out of what the obvious power struggles are going to be that are in my face. So those power struggles in my face, I don't want to deal with. So I'm getting out of them. And I'm only going to have fun during this Pluto return. Yeah, this is just a baby one. I have huge ones. Where are they? I have huge ones all over. But anyway, this is the one I'm picking to use because I literally am restructuring my DNA in every way that I can so that I don't stay stuck here. I know this was Vicky. Y'all want to know where I get my nails? Ask for Vicky. <laughs> They're going to kill me. <clears throat> it's I Nails in Burbank. Ask for Vicky. Okay, so now you know. Anyway, this Lumerian, yeah, I am I rub it. I get a little one. I have bigger ones, but I just rub it like this. Like when I'm sleeping, that's what I do. So yeah, that's what I do. And that's it. So Lumerian is actually really, really good. So I need to do this. I need to transform. Yeah, this is what it does. It actually hooks into it. Now, again, I've been doing the timeline jumping and I literally have jumped into weirdo timelines. Like I can tell when I'm not in a good timeline and I just jump out of it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah I love bed crystals this is what I do because I can't let Mew Mew on my face all night or I'm even more allergies than I already have but um she painted no I do not wear a mask but I should because I'm allergic to the cat but look I don't know if the Lumerian beings are tall or not I haven't gotten that far yet in my adventure with them but I do love Lumerian quartz and I do constantly rub it and I do do the, the I do do I do do the timeline jumping and it's put me in very interesting interesting positions so I can tell like it's it's fucking hilarious certain people try to trigger me um certain people try to trigger me and so when they trigger me my usual response was always to defend myself or fight back but now I'm just like, you know, I don't care what you say. Like, just shut the fuck up. No one wants to start an argument with you. So I know Mimi wants to come to bed with me, but I can't let her in my bed. I'll be itchy. After three days, I'm like, oh my God, my throat, my nose. I'm like, oh my God. So they say you can timeline jump to the past. However, if you go backwards, you need to experience all the way up to right now. So I jump ahead. And remember, the theory of timeline timeline jumping is that there are a hundred other ways you could go in your life. So which way do you want to go in the timeline, right? Trudeau is a trigger for me, a fucking trigger from fuck all, right? But which way do you want to go? No, I do laugh in their faces now. It's actually really funny because I can see the control and I can see the mind of the people. And it's kind of a gross way to be like, I really feel sorry for people that have to like say shitty things about people all the time and be shitty because it just shows that they're shitty. Right. So I don't like, I know baby Jack, how old did he turn? He had to turn two. He was six months old when he got hit by the car after Keith died. What was it? Two weeks after Keith died, something like that. A month after Keith, he died something. And his leg broke like Lucas's leg broke in all three spots, like Keithy's legs broke. So all, all of them took the, the hit for Keith. And um, anyway, Lucas just got the rod out of his leg. So yay, Lucas, when he broke, you know, the day after Keith died, he had the boarding accident on in the Arizona and um, had a, a metal rod in his leg the entire time. And the metal rod is now gone. So he is able to run and jump and do whatever the hell people do. I know, but I, I gather it hurt when it came out. I can't think about it. Um, so anyway, no reaction. It hits them hard. I don't even have a reaction. But you can see the manipulation and you can see where their head's plotting to, to do something. You know what I mean? Like they want to, Shungite is perfect. I don't know about it being from Russia, but it is in Russia. Shungite is what they use like a carbon to filter water, psychic attacks. You could definitely stick Shungite in your bra. I love Shungite in my bra. Um, I've got my lipstick here, you all, if you want to write this down. You know I use my lip liner from Jontun Blue. It was like at the dollar store. It's called 4K Beige, whatever one that is, if they still have it, right? And it might be $5, but that's my favorite lip liner. And then Kenna picked out this fabulous, fabulous, right? 
it's it's called um it's the powder kiss liquid lip gloss and it feels like little silky people on your lips it's so cute this one's mauve and so can pick this for me this is this one and it's mac okay and then she picked this over thank you for the super chats she picked this over and it's like a gloss. So this is Kenna's concoction. These are my lipsticks tonight. And these are from Kenna. She picked for me. So little Kenna Kenna picks. So that's what she did. Yes, black onyx. I have it in my ears because I'm a Leo. It's a Leo. I have all my crystals in my ears. I have um, you know, all my piercings are crystals for a reason. Um fun fact went black. Yes, it's very protective, very, very, very define silky people, soft people, <laughs> you know, silky little people. I don't know. It's not creepy, crusty lip gloss or lipstick. You know how some of it gets cakey. This is really soft, like mm, soft. Okay. So I'm over that. Uh, lapis is great to basically, um, it's Mac. It's Mac. It's literally Mac. Kenna works at Mac and it's, um, powder kiss liquid lip color with a gloss. So whatever this little shiny gloss is, but it's the powder kiss I really like. I didn't think I would like it. Um, the crystal, I got these at the piercing shops. I go to Nathan's, Nathan's tattoo over on Topanga and Nathan has really good jewelry. These are my black um, diamonds. I black diamonds I have the opals, the colors I like. You can get lapis jewelry. He has lapis. I have turquoise. This one's not real. It's just a flower. This is a black diamond right here. Gold. And this is smoky quartz in my ear here. So, and this is straight up quartz over here. So he has, and turquoise up here. So he has really good jewelry. So I go to Nathan's on Topanga. So that's where I actually work, like go, you know, and love it. And when Izzy comes back into town, I have Izzy do my piercings. She's in charge of the body. Annie took over for her because Izzy is in Berlin. And I think she's coming back in June. And they have Moonstone there too. Yeah, this is, I have Smoky Quartz. Yes, Smoky Quartz right here. Ashley, right on this, this piece that hang, has jewelry hangs down. Yes, I never take them out of my ears. I don't take them out. If I do take them out, I go and... um. I have Annie or Izzy take them out and change them. So I do that in the other piercings, which are not being discussed here. Anyway, those are opals and I have that kind of thing. So I use a bunch and I pierce everywhere. So I'm that person. Anyway, Izzy is my body piercer and she did, Nathan did my nose and Steve did my nose. <laughs> I'm pierced everywhere. Um, not that I should be saying that out loud. But anyway, Dan Bright. Dan Bright is a heart opener. Uh, both Dan Bright and um, uh, what you just said, the blue one, is, I know the shadow is from Kenna too. Yeah, no, I have piercings everywhere. There's nothing I don't pierce, okay? And I'm thinking of where to put more piercings. So um, how can you snuggle on your pillow? Well, I sleep on my back. So I sleep on my back and my feet are up because I don't want Clinton cankles. You know what I mean? No, I just happen to sleep. <laughs> exactly. I need crystals fucking everywhere because people be attacking. You know what I'm saying? Turquoise is my favorite. Um, I love these though. The reason I pick opal so much is because it has the color of blue that I like. So, and turquoise is Keithy's. Um, there's opal. I showed you the ring opals and this turquoise there. But Damberite, uh, Damberite, I don't know if Damberite helps with eating disorders, but it helps with self-love. I love Damberite. And I actually, if I were ever, you know, getting an engagement ring or ring, I would get it in Damberite. I think it's much better than diamonds because Damberite is, um, it opens the heart chakra. Damberite is a heart, anything that is um, Leo world, but Damberite in particular literally opens up your heart chakra. And it's really hard to find now. It's hard for me to find, and I knew Canada was going to be a dictatorship. Sorry. Selenite, you know, look, where's the selenite? Selenite's all, I have selenite, pack. I pack selenite. I, I'm not a huge fan of rose quartz. Um, Lamar, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lamar, that's a Leo ruled one. I'm, I love sodalite, but selenite, moonstone, I'm a little bit careful of. I have moonstone on, but Ladies, when you're menstruating with the moonstone, you're going to be a bit crazy. So, um, 
Yeah, Moonstone, you have to be careful because, yeah, the blue opals are my favorite because they remind me of Keithy. So I do the blue. Um, tanzanite, beautiful. They have tanzanite jewelry at Nathan's too. You can order whatever you want. Oh my God, pistachio opal. Can't find it anymore. Pistachio opal, where do I have it? I have it over there. Pistachio opal is, and I'm not in my ears, but it's seriously really hard to find. So I love Moldavite. I love all of those. But but Damborite, Labradite, very, very psychic. Crystals for pregnancy, you just need, I can't think offhand what would be pregnancy. Um, I would think calming crystals and strength. So anything that grounds you, because you want to be grounded to the pregnancy. Phantom Quartz, I love. I have some of that. Um, yes, Blue Shakatite. I can't never say that right. I have it. Emeralds, emeralds are beautiful. Yeah, so all of those crystals are so great uh, for cat allergies. Let's look at, thank you for that. Let's look. Cetirizine. Oh my God, I'm saying hi to Linda and her dogs too because she has a way to get rid of allergies. Thank you for that. Um, I wrote that down. There, I wrote it down for allergies. Um, allergies, allergies, <laughs> I can't spell. Yeah, ocean jasper. Oh, I mean, there's so many beautiful things. You know, I'm there's my obsidian. I'm obsessed with obsidian. Like, there's nothing I like better than obsidian. There's not a rock I don't like, really, quite frankly. Um, Morganite, I have Morganite jewelry. I have a stash. I get all of my jewelry from Nathan's, really. Um, not this one, though. This one, oh my God. And I lost my sun and moon up here that was from... Steve picked it when he did that. Oh, Bobby, there you are. I saw your text from earlier. I was working. So I saw your text. I have tiger's eyes. I'm not a huge fan of tiger's eyes, which is great. Look, Bobby, Kenna's makeup. Kenna picked for me. Remember I was going? Tourmaline is fantastic. Um, Mookite, I'm not familiar with that one, weirdly. So selenite wands, yes, uh, opals, selenite wands are my favorite. Aquamarine, beautiful. Citrine, beautiful. I'm a fan of obsidian and selenite, though. Like, if you know me, that's all I live for. I'm obsessed with obsidian. Thank you. Is that <laughs> for coffee in the morning, Bobby? I'll call you from coffee. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I don't like, I don't know, Mindy, I don't like tiger's eyes, but a tiger eye, um, I collect rocks from Palm Springs that are random rocks. I brought makeup today. Lancome. Oh, I love Lancome too. I love some of Lancome's. I use their perfume quite a bit. I like a lot of their smells. Um, selenite is my favorite. Sunstone is beautiful. Yes, I make selenite and sage wands. That's so beautiful. You wrap the sage around the selenite, huh? Beautiful. Totally clearing. Black tourmaline is grounding. Black tourmaline is great. Hematite, great. Green sol sol solite, perfect. But but remember, hematite, hematite, I have earrings that are those, but I'm not wearing them. Hematite is good. Um, tourmaline is good. Now, pink tourmaline for the heart, green tourmaline for the heart, black tourmaline to ground you, and brown tourmaline to ground you. So it depends what you're looking at. So you have to look. Um, I have all the crystals you just named. Oh, that's so cool. Um, crystals for illness. It depends where your illness is. So if you have illness, okay, here's my bracelets. This, okay, this was a gift. I think it was Katie was her name. Um, you have to figure out where you're sick. This was from Katie. This is a bracelet. It's beautiful. I wear it. It's silver. You know, I love the silver and I love the, the stacking bracelets. Um, wherever the illness is in your body, whichever body part it works to, you have to find something for that. I can't think off the hand of, of um, blood cancer. I can't think of that off offhand. And then I have obsidian here from Barbara Jean. You know, she makes those beautiful bracelets. So this is from Barbara Jean. This is obsidian. And this, of course, is from Mahana in Palm Springs. And it's my bracelet with Keithy's Ashes, Opal, Citrine, and Smoky Quartz. So you unscrew this, and I put little Keithy's Ashes, some of the bone and everything. I know I'm bizarre, but that's what I did. And Keithy's Ashes and Citrine in the middle. And it's just, it's beautiful. So that's what I did with that. So that's what that is. Um, Dragon's Blood. Well, Dragon's Blood will clear. Blue Kyanite for throat chakras. Um, Dragon's Blood will clear. Dragon's Blood clears. Um, I know, I love Palm Springs too. I like it mainly for hiking and torture, but 
you know, whatever. Anyway, she sent red garnet, red garnet for confidence, for sex, for, you know, I gave red garnet to one of my acquaintances. I was on a TV show. It has to be in 2014. And I was on the CW. Um, and I was on with, um, what's his name? Ashley, you know who I'm talking about. Shit, Ashley. Oh my God, what's his name? Big Bear, you know who I mean. He gets kicked off of everything too. He used to, he's a comedian. What the hell is his name? Ashley, think of it. I know you were just talking about him. I was doing a show. He was on the Josh Wolf show and I just blanked on his name right now. Anyway, you guys should follow him. Owen Benjamin, yes, yes. I was on the show with Owen, okay? Super nice guy, totally playful. We were doing stupid shit, totally playful on camera. Really, really fun. And actually, one of the first people to repel from Hollywood and start talking about everything. Yes, he's been, Owen is fabulous. So um, yeah, that was a yeah, that was a fun show. But he remember how he started going away and he's like he he's like over the top, but he's accurate. Meaning he got kicked off a lot before we did. He literally bailed and left. So Kind of interesting. You said tiger eye, and I thought you said you have tiger thighs. <laughs> Tiger's blood, tiger thighs. Yeah, no, tiger eyes. Anyway, Owen, I was on that show, and one of the producer's sisters was on the show. And I gave her a gift because she was having trouble dating. And I gave her a gift that would open up all the chakras down here, all the girly, sexy chakras, right? He, he peeped in the windows. That was it, Ashley. I know he was so playful. He was so great. Like, they're really good, you know, when you have a psychic on. They're pretty good. And there was the guy from Saturday Night, um, Saturday Night, uh, Second, not Second City. Oh, my God. I forgot it. You know what I mean. Saturday show, whatever, where Pete Davidson's on there. I can't even think of the name. I'm totally blanked. But anyway, um, I gave Garnet to this young sister friend of my friend, and I was on the show, and it opened her up. She got married, and she things changed for her. So Saturday Night Live, thank you, SML. <laughs> I'm like, it just blanked right out of my head. Anyway, I gave her that. I like Garnet because it opens up all the sexual chakras, and it opens up the root chakra, sacral chakra, and all of the chakras where you're stuck from childhood issues and where you have issues of shame and guilt and fear and what blocks you. And then it just straight out brings in confidence and opens you up. I want a private cremation for my pet. Jade, I had a private cremation for Tulip when I did. I heard the death bird today. I think my aunt. Oh, no. Yeah, did the bird come in the house or just around the house? Um, <clears throat> yikes. Yeah, I love Garnet, but it also heals those things that keep us blocked from relationships and everything. Saturday Night Liberals, right? Mm hmm. I did a pre made, oh, your cat. I did private for, um, for Tulip, but here's a funny story. It's actually not story funny and it's not my story. But so, anyway, my friend was telling me that when her cat passed, her cat, she took her cat to the vet and she brought her cat back home. Or no, maybe it was her dog. Sorry, it was her dog. She brought her dog back home. And because the dog had bit somebody, they said, um, they, they, the vet said, you have to bring your dog back, <laughs> Ashley. I love you too, Ashley. You know that. Um, so they told my friend she had to bring her dog back to the vet because it could have, um, Jade's a really good stone. It could have, uh, rabies, right? So she was like, I'm not bringing my dog back there. La, 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 la. But she ended up taking it back and they ended up cremating the dog, right? And then they called her and asked her, was her dog like the fluffy dog, the little white dog? What color was her dog? And I was like, Oh, fuck no, right? So, um, well, every time a bird hits my window or comes in the house, this to me is a death bird, but I don't know what Bobby means by it, but she heard it. So Bobby, Bobby's very psychic. I know, so she was saying when they asked her if she wanted a primate cremation, like what dog are they giving her? <laughs> it's not funny. I, I, Tulip died in my arms when I drove her to um, the death bird comes to me in the mornings. Only when death is near, I hear it. Okay, so that's how it works for Bobby. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, when a bird gets in my house, I think someone's dying. So when the bird does that, I'm like, get out. I tried to chase it out. Um, yeah, no, Owen was a truther before it was popular. Like he was aggressive and fucking over the top, but he was dead on. Everything he said has come true. And he literally flipped a switch and left Hollywood. 
which when you think about that, and he got kicked off, and he got blocked, and he's building himself back, and, and, and. But he was doing that, um, yeah, when it flies in its death. So he was doing that like a long time ago. Oh, and I'm talking about, and he's familiar with Hollywood, like he's familiar. Madonna's new baby face. What are we looking at with Madonna? What are we looking at with this bitch Madonna, right? Female boxer named Noel. Aw, poor Noel. Yeah, you know what? When Tulip died, I couldn't hardly bats in the house. Make sure they don't give you the Wuhan virus. Um, when Tulip died, I took her to the vet and she died and she looked like Keith. It was weird. Her body went limp like Keith and she got all skinny, but I saw her leave too. But I didn't see Keithy leave. George saw Keithy leave. But anyway, yeah. Okay, let's see Madonna. I'm looking her up here so we can see. And then I got to start doing TikToks, y'all. Fucking TikToks now. Um, is hematite good for blood cancer? There you go. Fourth house, Pluto, and Libra. <clears throat> I'm ashes and pinching them in a cross. Oh, there. Awesome. Oh, thank you for that. I have Keithy's, Keithy's ashes in the ring I made. Get an empty ring bezel. Make a ring. Get a mold. I have them here, and I have them all in my tattoos. Um, yes, I said Bono, you know my video with Bono. There's absolutely no way that Chester Bennington left this planet without the instruction of Bono, okay? You know, you know that. I'm just saying. Okay, so let's look up Madonna whore. Madonna, Madonna, right? Madonna has a new face. Oh God, why does she have a new face, this bitch? I think this is the same face. She has a weird ass is what she has. Like she's always been weird looking. And notice how she's got, you know, yeah, her face is, she has a, I don't like her face right now. It's not a good looking face. I mean, she resembles herself. You know, she resembles herself, but yeah, I don't even know what to say. That's a lot of plastic surgery or she's a clone. I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Yeah, it looks very weird. I don't know. She looks weird. Maybe she's Photoshopping it. I'm not sure what she's doing. She might be Photoshopping it. it might be a clone. Yeah, she doesn't look right. She looks demonic in some of them and then she looks innocent in others. Can someone leave their body behind? For you do leave your body. The heart... When the motorcyclist, um, his name was Derek, you know the story, died outside of Keith's room seven years before Keith passed. Um, and I heard the wording, he's going to die. So I went around the corner in the car. I grabbed John and went and sat on the corner. And I watched him hit the back end of the car that fishtailed out. And I watched the chick that was driving that lied and said it was her passenger was asleep in the back seat because he had the beef with the motorcycle rider. She fucking flipped a U-turn in the middle of the road. I watched the bike hit the car. I watched him fly off, perfectly landed on the ground, not a drop of blood. I saw him step out and his heart was still beating and they were still doing compressions on him for about three minutes. And I kept saying, he's left. I saw him leave. I saw him leave. And so, um, yeah. That happened right there. So your heart will leave. And actually with Keith, I think he waited till George got there, but you're not going to feel it, okay? You're not going to feel it. You're not going to feel, you're really not going to feel the end part of your life when you're planning on leaving, okay? So yeah, oh my God, Bono's responsible for so much. Yeah, it looks like her daughter, right? But her daughter, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say this. Don't get mad at me. Don't fucking hate out there. Don't, don't hate me, okay? Don't hate me. Um, hold on. I'm going to show you this, but don't hate me. Avoid dairy food. I can't. It's, I live on dairy food. <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay. I'm going to show you this. Let's see. Videos. And you tell me, I mean, uh, his daughter. If this isn't a man or what, I'm sorry, I'm saying it. She's a fucking man, right? Yes, yes, she's a fucking man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, okay, wait, that's not it. I'm just, I don't understand. She's a fucking man. 
I can't. I just can't. I mean, okay, like I want you to look at this picture and tell me why that this is a woman. How is this a woman? I don't understand how this is a woman. How is this a woman? The body doesn't look like a woman. This is Madonna's daughter. I'm just saying, what do you think of Madonna's daughter? Wait, come back here. Do you see? It's not. It's not a woman. That's a lot of a lot of face lights. It's called a drama crown. Look it up and it's horrible. Wait, what the, drama crown is the surgery? I don't know what you're talking about. Does this look like a female? Go look her up. Okay, just, I just don't, I don't, I, I mean, that's not, I'm sorry. If I, I mean, even the face, like, look at the neck. What is this? And she's so hairy. I don't know. I'm just asking, you know. Yes, I know I'm saying that, but then they call me crazy. I'm like, you know what? I, I literally, uh, yeah, shoulders to hip ratio. I mean, yes, thank you. Reverse world, fucking reverse world. Um, oh, androchrome, it's not a surgery, sorry. And now I know what you're talking about, pardon me. I know, look at the neck, like, I mean, look at, I'm a girl neck, but look, I have a little neck. So weird, but anyway, and her hairy armpits. Well, she's doing that to make a stance. Yeah, she had to have been inverted. That, I mean, those are, I just can't, you know, I, I can't. I just, I can't. Madonna's an asshole, but I can't deal with that. It's not the poor baby's fault. Um, anyway, what the hell was I going to say? <laughs> I forget what I was going to say. So, yeah, um, that's exactly what it is. Let's see. They're pledging. I know. It's very, very man, man body. If I saw that coming down the runway, I'd be like, oh, my God, she's built like a linebacker. Exactly. So, you know, oh, that's what I was saying. When I told John that, is it Venus or Serena? Which one's the bigger one? One of them is smaller. Serena, is that the one or is it Venus? No, it's Venus. I said, that is not a female. That is not a fucking female. I don't care what you tell me. I do not care what you tell me. It is reverse world and Venus and Serena. Thank you. I'm like, the, I say, you think she looks cute? No, she looks like a fucking man. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I just have to say it, cloned her daughter, Lourdes, and transplanted her face. Are you kidding? Wait, what? What, what? Wait, this chick cloned her daughter, Lourdes, and... Oh, my God, are you kidding? Yeah, I don't need to look young that... I'm just going to age gracefully. And what's up with Christy Brinkley all over the news? Hi, I'm Christy Brinkley, and I hate it when people are ageist and sexist against me. Well, Christy, we hated it when you were on the cover of all the magazines, and you were the beauty standard because most of us could not live up to it. So that has that, Christy. How is that? Anyway, she's whining about her age like Paulina Poroskova. You two bitches were supermodels. What the fuck are you whining about? Because you're old now and people don't like you. Welcome to the real world, 2022. So welcome to the real world. She looks like a stormtrooper, right? I mean, please. Um, so we've got Christy Brinkley blab blabbing about ageism, you know. She's like, oh my God, like I don't like being judged. Okay, first of all, freak, no one's judging you because you look better than 90% of the population. Then you've got Paulina Poroskova blab blabbing about everything. She's like, blah, 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 you know, with this. And then she's like, I don't like being judged, but let me put on my string bikini and show you how sexy it is at 56. I'm not saying it's not sexy. We're not saying that, but we just don't want to see you have a nervous breakdown because you're like, I know, right? Like, shut the fuck up. They're, but see, they're being pushed for a reason. And then there's C. Teagan. C. Teagan is doing in vitro needles. I have to turn on my Yahoo and see this. You know why? She's doing in vitro because of the, her miscarriage. Exactly. And that goes for Miss Doubtfire and C. Teagan too. So that's what she's doing. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same with Brad and Angie. I know, I can't. I just can't fucking deal with it. I mean, I was watching. Oh my God, y'all. I was watching. Oh, I was watching The Devil's Advocate. Did you watch that? Did you watch that movie? Remember Al Pacino? Like how tall is he? 5'4"? Anyway, Al Pacino next to Keanu Reeves, right? 
Keanu Reeves, right? And she looked like a man. She is a man. Dude looks like a dude looks like a chick or dude looks like whatever. Dude looks like a lady. <laughs> dude looks like a lady. Um anyway, Devil's Advocate. Watch that shit. We are living that shit. That's the shit that we're living. We are living that shit right now. The Devil's Advocate. Remember that movie? Oh, see, that's why I'm saying she's going on and on about having a miscarriage, which I'm not going to talk about that, but she's talking about having in vitro shots. In vitro shots. Ooh, why'd he hate him? Oh, Al couldn't stand him? Really? Maybe he was jealous of him because he's good looking. Keanu's pretty good looking. Like he's pretty fucking good looking. Canadian, Hawaiian, lived in Canada. Dude looks like a lady. I know. I mean, come on. Playboy Bunny. I know. Playboy Bunny documentary. That's just typical. Hefner's a freak and he's a C CIA operative anyway. Um, maybe she shouldn't have another. No, she should not have another. No, she shouldn't. He is Canadian. See, I can't hate my Canadians, but um, I literally, Cano's real cute. That's all I can say. Charlize, speaking of devil's advocate, Charlize is kind of cute on there, but... She adopted the two little dark-skinned babies from two different families, and they're both transgender. So they're four, and they're wearing tutus to school because crazy mama bear, who's really nuts, decided that both of them needed to change their gender. Yes, yeah, Sam Elliott will stick with Sam Elliott, right? <laughs> Let's stick with Sam Elliott. That's about where we're going with it. And who's the other one? Um, there's a couple of them that are real cute. It is child abuse. She's dressing her adopted children. Yeah, Brooke Shields. I saw a whole thing. I know they filmed her. They filmed her at the Playboy house. Um, Brooke Shields, age 10. Her mother let that pornography go on there. because Brooke Shields is an abused child. Her mother did not take care of her. She launched her career and everybody's like, oh, she's famous. She's this and that. But there's a lot of struggle. And her mother was an uh, alcoholic. I feel badly for Brooke Shields. I love Sean Connery till he said he beats his women. Then I'm like, you know what, fucker? Bring it on. <laughs> I don't know if Cher's a man. I can't tell you that. She said she was. Remember? Mom, I am a man. <laughs> I make money. Um, they filmed, they did a photo spread of Brooke Shields in Playboy or in that modeling thing. She was 10. This is just, there's nothing between my Jordash and me. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis's kid really should reconsider being transgendered because it's not doing him, her, any favors. Um, yeah, well, Brooke Shields' mom was an alcoholic and wanted fame for her, so she was pushed out there. Charlize Theron, transgender. Warren Beatty, transgender, female to male in his family. Magic Johnson, Dwayne Wade, right, his 12-year-old. Fucking stop with the agenda. Stop with the agenda. I know that two adopted kids from two different families are not transgendered, okay? Like, I know. Exactly. And poor Brooke Shields. I mean, it's just, it is. It's wicked. It's wrong. Um, Steven Tyler looks like an old chick right now. Steven Tyler looks like an old chick. Jamie Lee Curtis looks like a man, but she was a hermaphrodite. Back in the day when I was a little kid, they said she was a hermaphrodite. So there are people that are born with both sex genders and they pick one in, in infancy or whatever. So that, uh, that isn't quite the same thing, except that my story of meeting Tony Curtis, I was with my friend at the time. We were in Larchmount and you see people there like, um, who did I see last time I was down there? Conan O'Brien. You see people and he was wearing his mask at the table. Hello, mask wearer, you know, put your mask on. Mask up, bitch. Anyway, he was wearing his mask. Oh, my God. Anyhow, seriously. But all of that aside, I was there at a restaurant eating lunch, and in came Tony Curtis, and my friend introduced me, and I could not. I was just like, how? Like, he's just really, really fucking gay. Which is fine, but... He had six kids and a girlfriend. So I don't understand what they're doing, except um, <laughs> you're watching me. Uh, Brooke grew up in your area. Let's see, Jamie was really both sex. Yeah, she was hermaphrodite. That's what I heard. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Gold Cadillac used to go to my friend's house to party. Well, Tony, 
Tony Curtis is gay? Okay. No, him, Tom Cruise, and John Travolta, they're definitely straight men. Yeah. No, there. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I got to watch me some Seinfeld tonight. Yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that. But my point to the wrongness is they've, con they've, they've twisted a whole society to where we are looking up to people that say they're married and they're definitely gay like Trudeau. Sorry, like Trudeau's father. Sorry. I don't think Castro was gay, but he was a swinger. So, you know, that's how the Trudeaus, you know, they swing in. Trudeau Sr. probably loved watching his wife with Castro the Communist, right? Can you imagine that? I wonder if he filmed it. Do you think he filmed it? I bet you there's that tape out there. Ugh. Anyhow, um, all of that, all of that aside, but Bono, Bono Luciferian, try High Priest Luciferian, cult member demon. He's on stage like a demon. You don't think they're in... The problem is, the problem is people do not believe that entities can enter into the physical body. They just don't believe it. So it's really hard. Anyway, is Whoopi gay? I don't know. I mean, she's another one that let her boyfriend, Ted Danson, do blackface. Hello, Ted Danson. Why are you doing blackface? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Stop coloring your face. Just stop. Oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird. All right. You, you remember that? Like, fuck Whoopi. What are you like? And she's smiling away, which she is a black woman. So she doesn't have to get bent out of shape about that. But I was like, Sarah Silverman, why? What's with the black face? Like just fucking stop with the black face. Go be tan mom or something. Remember tan mom, tan like that. That's like kind of Kano has a, a girlfriend. I don't know. Oh, that girlfriend. Yes, I do know. That's one interesting looking woman, probably a handler and looks like she's had some bad no nose jobs and I wouldn't, I, okay, I'm going to sound horrible. Forgive me, but yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. So that's what I'm going to say. Yes. Yes. Why <laughs> was Ted dancing? I don't know. Maybe he had black. He didn't want to go back. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, David Geffen. Yeah, Keanu Reeves was David Geffen's lover. That's no one. That's since he was 19. Um, since he was 19. Mom's voice mail saying, I love you, tattooed on my arm in her voice. How do I artist use the ashes? Oh, okay. I get it. Okay, so what you do. Wait, what's your name? My Miller time. All right, Miss Miller time. My Miller time. I think that's what she said. Okay, I'm going to strip down again. All right, so here's what you do. I'm stripping, stripping y'all. Every single tattoo, starting with the first one. Where's the first one? Right here. That says, stop looking for happiness in the same place you lost it. That's what I opened up when I found Keith and the police gave me his phone. That was a screensaver. So when they're mixing the ink, which you're talking about doing a voicemail like that, the voicemail of your mom, when they do the ink, you take a smidgen of the ashes, just a smidgen, like as much as would, like a smidgen of cocaine on your finger, but do not snort the ashes, okay? So like, see this nail? Put it in a baggie or put a little bit more if you want in a baggie and they will take it and they have little ink things and they will mix it in with the ink. Every single tattoo has Keithy's ashes in it all over. So I just give it to them in a little plastic bag and they take out what they need and you just do it privately. You don't announce it, but they've all been very gracious with me and they've all done it. Yes, I'm doing a whole sleeve. You know that. I'm waiting for Ruger to book me. Ruger, book me. I'm waiting for Ruger to book me um, because I got more portraits. So yeah, these these are the most beautiful. I cannot I cannot tell you how happy I am to see that. But that's what we do. He puts the ashes in. He puts the ashes in with the ink. And when they draw you, the ink's going in. So you're mixed. And they don't need a lot. It's a smidgen. It's, ugh, it's a smidgen, right? I know the tattoos are so beautiful. But like, look at my long nail. Look at my thumbnail here. Can you see? So take, take, 
take a pinch like this much, a little pinch. Look, it looks like I just flashed you the devil sign. <laughs> I did not. Take a pinch, like a half of a teaspoon, tablespoon, no, teaspoon, the little one. Half of it, put it in a bag. They won't take all your ashes. They will remove the ashes and put them in the ink. Yes, I talked about the Pluto return. So cutest thumb ever. Um, I know I need a, I've, I should get the ram that I saw in Mount Baldy. That's another one I need my ram. He changed my life, uh, that ram. And I saw him. Anyway, um, yeah, don't ask me, boo. I wasn't, I was trying to say this much, but I made, you know, I'm not going to do it again. I swear to God, I wasn't fucking doing that, okay? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's ashes. I've, I've got part of Keith's bones in here. I took a piece of the bone. I touched my son's ashes. I gave birth to my son. I'm not going to not touch them. It was hard at first, but now I'm able to do it. So that's what I will do. It's still my son, and that's that. So, yes, I did talk about the Pluto return. I talked about it prior. Pluto threw the signs. So, yeah, I had to learn how to deal with the ashes, and I had to learn how to, to do with it, and um, that's what I had to do. That's, you know, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Why? Are you asking me out? <laughs> um, you have Joe's ashes. Yeah, well, Mindy, you can get a tattoo with them. Look, 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 look. What is this? The legend bracelet, Mindy? Look, you can pop them in. It's really easy. How does it come out? Oh, well, anyway, you unscrew this and then these two parts come apart, Mindy, and you can get legend bracelet there. And you can wear Joe's ashes like that and then just put them aside. You can do that. A date. No, there's somebody on here. I'm not going out on a date. No, tomorrow night, um, what I'm going to do during the Pluto return is try not to piss anyone off. Try not to get in a fight with control freaks in my life. And, oh, you made crystal jewelry with the ashes. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm still hoping you'll come over. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. What's De Deanna? Okay, here's the thing. I don't know how many of you booked, but Deanna's open on my site right now. But here's Deanna. First of all, she's one of my best friends. So I've known her almost 30 years. Secondly, I was on the phone with her when I was driving to see if my son was dead, okay? I just was on the phone. Deanna communicated with Keith and commun she's very good. You let her read the way she reads, she's very good. She's who I trust. So that's all I'm going to say. She's who I trust. Um, so she's very good. She is open on my books, but I feel like... I feel like she's you know, she's the person I would ask for information. So should I eat? Should I not eat the brownie? Should I or should I eat the brownie? Is it a weed brownie? I have to watch those weed brownies. <laughs> yeah, she's a very good. So I try. I talked to her. But Bobby knows. Bobby's been on the phone with Deanna and been on the phone with me and Deanna. She's extremely good. She gets the information the way she gets it, and she helped me with keys. She helped us with what we were are were doing right. She's on my website. So go to sloanbella.com and click readings. So you can book her through there for now. And then you'll have her information and then you can, you know, continue to book her however you want to book her. But anyhow, um, yeah, so she's doing that. She's helping me out while I finish my stuff. Deanna's extraordinarily gifted. That's all I can say to you. Aw, uh, thank you, sweetheart. Do it with your mom's ashes. They just take a smidgen. Honestly, they don't take much. And get and they'll hold the bag like this so they don't lose the ashes. I almost dropped ashes on the floor because, you know, I'm a space cadet. Um, oh, good. Y'all are booked with her. Good. Definitely eat the brownie. Okay, good. So, you know, you can find her on my website. I'm not open. When I get open for times, you'll be able to pick her or I. So, you'll be able to pick either or. So you can do eat that brownie, right? <laughs> Actually, it's like eat that brownie. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. I am now getting ready for bed because I am exhausted. So I'm getting ready for bed. I love the pendulum. There's a pendulum meeting. Where's the pendulum? Wait, what's the pendulum? Back it on up. Back it on. If anyone is interested, there's a pendulum meeting tomorrow evening. Oh, tomorrow evening for missing Michelle Vaughn on Margaret Pendulum Queen. Okay, I don't know who that person is, but check that out, y'all. I didn't know what a pendulum meeting was. So there you go. So I've just been diagnosed with diabetes. Okay, Michelle, 
chop, chop. Let's start exercising and let's get rid of sugar. We need to rebalance. You can do it. Six months. I'm positive. Eat a raw food diet. No alcohol, raw food, and no sugar. Yeah, I know. Yucky, yucky. But you can. All right. Okay. Where is that Lori? Which Lori? Libra Lori or the other Lori? <laughs> I'm so, I gotta have friends that have different names, right? Libra Lori is L-O-R-I. Lori in the teen project is L-A-U-R-I. Um, okay, night. Yeah, pendulum cream freaked me out when I was sick. <laughs> oh my God, Bobby, you're hilarious. Bobby was completely out of body when she was sick. Completely. She was, she was finding my... Bobby was sick with a fever in bed, out of her mind, like with a fever, sick. And she was researching my entire birth family and tracking it all the way back to the 1500s. <laughs> I was reading these texts. She had to be out of body, giving her best information while she was sick. That's what I think. So, I mean, she just literally had to be. Okay, you guys, thank you for the super chat. Okay, I have to look up these missing people. All right, you guys, peace out. I love each and every one of you. For anybody tattooing with your loved one's ashes, just sneak, just put them in a Ziploc bag. You don't need to hoard a whole jar. Paquito amount in there. You just need it to flavor the ink, just so it flavors the ink, and then it's good, right? That's all you're doing. You're drawing a sprinkle of pepper in there so that you have it, and then it'll be the happiest thing you ever did because your baby will be on your arm, your mom will be on your arm, whoever will be on your arm, leg, butt cheek, wherever you're putting them. Okay, peace out, you guys. I keep, I'm not eating, but I keep gaining weight. So you gotta move more and eat differently, maybe. Drink more water. Bye, you guys. Bye, thank you so much. Bye, guys.